360, let's start the show. You will kick high and I will sweep low. From local to global, it's the thing that we love. Kanate! San Rokumaru! Yes, we're kicking it off with the episode 50. Holy moly. Of the Karate 360 podcast. 50 episodes. How do you say 50 in Japanese? Goju. Goju. It's yeah. Goju Kai. Goju Kai. That's right. There we go. We're episode. Going to Goju Kai. We're going to Goju Kai. All right. Uh, episode fifty. Look at us go. Next week uh, will be our one year. Holy cow! So we're almost starting. fifty-one episodes. Almost fifty-one. Well, next, we'll do fifty-one. Next fifty. Week. Well, fifty-one will, will be our one year. Yes. It'll because it'll be one year so from the date. In fifty-two weeks, we made fifty-one episodes. It's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. That's, That's pretty good. Yeah, we really took one and week off. We're just getting started. Just getting started. Just exactly. getting fired up. And here we go. Speaking of getting started, we're starting here with this episode of the Karate Three Sixty Podcast. Starting back on uh, schedule, back to school. That's right. Starting in the back northern hemisphere. You're in the back. northern hemisphere, and also starting back. I'm back. I know. And starting back karate classes. A lot of people starting back up here this week. Yes. It's been crazy. The classes have been packed. Packed. Huge. Huge. Line up at the desk. Line up at the door. Um, yeah. And also, we doubled the after school program size. Yeah. We bought another van. We hired a driver. Um, there's another after school company that suddenly just said, I don't think we're going to pick up at a whole bunch of locations. And then they just told the parents now. And you guys are, okay, we'll okay, pick them up. We'll, we'll do, and we heard about what, this happening at one school right after school ended normally with after school programs like half a year ahead of time you have to book your spot yeah yeah and so yeah they canceled after schools out just making the parents scramble so we're just trying to help out kenzen sports karate to the rescue that's right in, in the, the process yeah in the uh kenzen mobile two that's of right. them now two commercially certified uh safety checked 15 passenger vans crazy right so we uh there's not a lot of these vans out there mm -hmm. Um, it was quite funny because getting this this one, it, is, it was from a, a national rental car company, and they were fantastic in finding us one of their vehicles that they could let go. So looked all over, got it into the city. Um, the day we were wanted to buy it, the safety certificate ran out because it only lasts six months. Mm. And so it was a, a very interesting thing of going to get safety checked, getting a few things have to be fixed. And I think I made about eight trips to national yeah. <laughs> to the office, yeah. eight trips to the, and then like moving around in different directions. And then finally today, the insurance agents like you got it, you're on it. And so I just went straight and picked up the kids. Yeah. yeah it was <laughs> perfect right timing. To it. Um, and then we're going to get nice splashy pictures on it next week. Awesome. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's fun. It's a, uh, it's a fun way. This year's only uh, full timers. So, these kids are going to be little superstars by December. No, it's great. And even our regular classes here at Ken Sports Grace starting up. Lots of people starting up. I oh. love about the first week back because everybody's always so fired up. Like yes. the competition season is now, I mean, it hasn't officially started, but everybody's gearing up now. I mean, you can see, you got to see the first class who trained over the summer, who for maybe sure. took it off, but everybody's hungry now, especially oh. those competing athletes or those, those people that are going for the next belt. They say, you know, I want to get that next belt level. Yeah. Everybody's fired up. So it's great. I just feel like it just recharges everybody. It was funny, like to go from last week of like 10 to like, wow, we're almost 30 people. I know. That class are huge Holy. and full now. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I had some new people come over from Vancouver. So mm -hmm. like Parvin Maven, she yes. just got the silver medal. The U21. The Junior Pan Ams, junior yeah. Pan Ams. So yeah. she just came over. And Fernando from BC team, he yeah. also came over. That's right. They're our first year at University of Victoria, so they're going to be training with us. So you had a big class tonight, too. Yeah, it was good. The sports karate class was really good. And uh, also going back to the University of Victoria as myself. However, I spent all about 10 minutes there this, this week. Okay. I okay. walked there, and it was mayhem. There was first years everywhere, not yes. knowing where to go, bumping into people. And I said, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, you're a PhD student. You only have to show up like, That's what, right. That's once right. a month. I don't even know if I have to show up. Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. I have to teach, I guess. But besides that, well, I don't need to show up. Yes. Yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. But we'll be back at okay, it. Okay, do we have a prediction? When the PhD will be completed? It will be completed. It will be completed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> will be completed in two and a half years. I'm shooting for two years, but... What is the title of the degree it. that you will have? Uh, PhD in kinesiology. Right on. Right. What do you think the title of your final thesis the final be? dissertation so far our working title or working project is going to be uh the physiological requirements and the fitness parameters in of the combat sports right on so looking at what it takes for each 
individual combat sport. I think we've talked about this, what it takes physiologically to perform them, how they're different from the other combat sports, and then fitness tests that relate to those on how you can actually assess those athletes as well. That's amazing. So yeah, I'm looking at putting hopefully a textbook out by the end of this all where you can look and break it down and this is how we measure it. This is what it takes to do these sports and this is this is what you got to do. You heard it here first, folks. There you go. Heard it here first That's on right. September 7th and as long as I don't go crazy before then. <laughs> super so fun. you're... So graduation let's see would be 2018 to so like spring of 2019 yes i think that sounds right yes On. yeah and then onwards and numbers. oh you have a presentation soon right i do i have a uh i'm presenting at the csap conference in winnipeg september uh no sorry october 28th 20, 27th what to 28th he, that, that's a big conference i don't think our Fine listeners know what that means. That's very true. CSEP is the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiologists. Uh-huh. So it's the biggest uh, exercise science related conference in Canada. And yeah, I'll be presenting both the research uh, on the fitness testing we put together for karate athletes. That's going to be presented there as well. And I'm up for an award for that one, actually. I'm up for, for an award on that one. And I'm also presenting the kind of validation study we did just a quick little clean one on the 300 meter shuttle you know we brought that shorter so we rewrote a study on that one as well so i'll be presenting that as well that's fantastic and hopefully both these will be published in a a reputable journal between now and then reputable journal reputable journal yeah where they wear bow ties and they that's right that's right (laughs) peer review (laughs) peer review that's what they say at least i don't know peer review but good enough in (laughs) yeah that's awesome there we go lots of stuff coming down and and things just get busy i think for everybody starting september getting much busier uh maybe some people had heard that victoria where we live was going to there was a group of people that wanted to go for the commonwealth games and host it here oh really 2023 i think it ah, was, i didn't hear that. that okay so they there was a group of people in town who put together a package put together a budget mm. presented it at a conference and basically it was about 800 million dollars <laughs> and we can't uh, afford that yeah, yeah, the rest <laughs> of the world went thank you very much for your time and sorry victoria we are busy putting in bike lanes everywhere yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> but that now karate is in the commonwealth games yeah so it's, yeah, they didn't go for it this time. Plus, there's a, a new government in our province. Is there any news on the announcement that uh, karate will be in the 2024 Olympics going forward? That whole that, whole that is it must later be soon. this month. Yeah, right. Most likely, it's going to make. I think it's like September 17th or 24th. Okay, so we should keep our eye open on it. That's pretty big because I'll confirm it's still going. Yes. Now, being in France, it should get the okay. Yeah, I think. It's expected that it'll be. It's expected to make it through because it would be weird to cancel it when they haven't even had it yet. Yeah, right. Um, You know, uh, as long as you know everything on the East Asia stays chilled. Yes, for 2018 and 2020. That and by the way, some people were wondering, myself included, why next year's a PKF tournament not going to be in Venezuela. I don't know if you've read the news, but Venezuela is not the happiest place right now. (laughs) They've had a complete internal country meltdown yeah okay um, i did not read this yeah venezuela is uh on the verge of complete societal collapse whoa okay yeah, so so where are they gonna hold it do we know they have to they're gonna change the location sure but venezuela was on the rotation and that's why they don't want us to be sending people into a place that isn't that much fun to go to right now. sure makes it's sense. not very much fun to arrive at the airport and leave and still not get robbed and mm. you know um there was a uh, yeah, there was a, a news crew that went down and just the riots against the government and how uh, corrupt the government has been in managing the country. So they want to send lots of teams of athletes into that mix. Sure, it makes you know? sense. So that's why they have to move it. Yeah. So we're full of all kinds we're of We're full of all kinds we're of We're dropping knowledge left and right. Dropping knowledge, bringing value. That's right. Well, let's, let's go right into global news. Karate global news. All right. Well, we know starting well, today is uh, September 7th. For those of you watching us on Facebook Live, thank you very much. Uh, Thursday night, 8 or 9 p.m., we'll be doing this. Tomorrow, September 8th to September 10th, is the German Open. Wow. In Leipzig, Germany, the last K1 of the year. The Karate Canada team got there, I think, yesterday. I think there's 15 athletes competing on the Canadian team. Uh, maybe a few more, but it looks like 15 on there. And, yeah, getting to Germany and starting the competition tomorrow. 24. 24. 24. We have... More than 50. Three... Female kata, three male kata. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven female kumite and 11 male kumite. Great. And 
for coaches. Awesome. So there it is. That's uh, starting up tomorrow. And that, and of course, you know, this is the last K1 of the year. There's going to be the stars from all around the world going here competing yes. to try and uh, win gold again. There's And there's some awards given out at the end of That's it. right. The, uh, I don't think they call it the grand champion, but like the pretty much the athlete of the year award for, for the K1 uh, series is going to be presented there as well in Germany. So that's great. Obviously, people to watch out for, the kata athletes, are, are the male kata is going to be, you know, one of the more premier events in there. You got Rio Kiyuna from Japan. You have a world ranking leader, Damian Cantero from Spain, who's going to be challenging for that Kata Gold, as well as uh, two-time world title holder, Antonio Diaz from Venezuela. So those top three looking pretty sharp. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the draws are. I guess we probably can't see those quite yet. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there in the men's Kata. Absolutely. Maybe it's on Sport Data, so we can check. You know, and have a look. But we will have all the results for you guys next weekend. Sure. Um, and of course, all the other top players will be there. Douglas Burrows, minus 60 kilograms, will be there. I'm sure Raga will be there. Raga will be there. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody competing in this big monument event. And actually, I heard it has broken the record from Paris of the most athletes in the uh, in the competition. Oh, wow. That's pa huge. Paris had 1,200. This one has 1,300. So, 100 more athletes. <laughs> That's yeah. Big. So, a new record for K1. So, again, just showing you karate growing competition after competition more people going more people watching of course they have the wkf tv now you can stream it all online yes. it's great no it's awesome well you know we just had some athletes in here today going i really really want to get to 2020 yes and yes. you know now the this next year is really important yeah for doing well yeah um, i mean it's 2017 almost the end of 2017 already it's going crazy it's amazing it's really amazing um we have to talk about the elephant in the room, which keeps coming up, and that's the Cobra Kai. The Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. They always find their way in. I know, the Cobra Kai. Um, there's actually a Cobra Kai dojo in Vancouver. I know there is, They yes. actually have the logo and everything, right? <laughs> um, did you read the whole story? I've now read the whole story. I, I've I, got the whole background on this thing. Okay, well, then you fill us in. I didn't read the whole thing. I'll give you the Coles notes. Give me the Coles notes. All right, so this is... Uh, going to be a present day um the universe that it's in is a present day world where daniel and um uh is sort of successful it's kind of struggling he's got a karate dojo and who was his main rival was that was um for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about we are talking about the uh karate kid the original the karate original karate kid and how kid. it's coming back as a youtube series yeah a tv series a youtube tv series uh, yeah and uh Oh, I just blanked right now what um, Daniel's Cobra Kai opponent name was. Um, exactly. Anyway, that guy's down his luck to so restart the Cobra Kai dojo, and then they the comedy and action ensues. Is it Johnny? Johnny, that's it. There you go, Johnny. Sweep the leg, Johnny. <laughs> um, and it's a series that's going to be on YouTube. Um, and so, what I want to talk about is: is it relevant? Of course, it's relevant. Okay. When is Karate Kid not relevant? You know how many people have seen? Have, I, I was asking this to like you know the the, the preteens and stuff. Like how many have actually seen Karate Kid? And they all ask about the Jackie Chan version. Ah, uh, no. Yeah. The so some, like twice now in the club, we've like we're playing the movie. Go and watch it yes, if you want to. Totally. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to recreate some awareness of its relevance. The other thing is, it's going to be on YouTube. YouTube Red. So everybody's going to be able to see it, right? Smartphones, they completely skipped TV, cable TV. So this won't. Do you this not, is even skipping uh, Netflix. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not familiar with YouTube Red. Are they going to be able to? Just you have to subscribe, or you'll be able to just get it. I, I, I'm not sure either. I think YouTube Red is YouTube has invested a ton of money in creating some original content. So sure. It has like Netflix. Netflix and you'll everybody just, now. I think you'll go to it. You'll click. You might pay for it. It might be free at some point. Um, but what's interesting is. TV, cable TV, movies, like putting out ads just a movie, um, and even Netflix has been skipped for YouTube to do some original content. Yeah. Because everyone's looking at it on their phones. Totally. They're going to be there anyway. Yeah. When was the last time you sat down in front of cable television, just turn the TV on and just flip channels? I don't even have cable television. Uh, pff, I couldn't even tell you the last time I sat down and watched cable Weird, television. Right? Yeah, even when I watch like baseball, it's yeah. not even on. I have a subscription that I watch, just start up the Apple TV and watch the baseball yeah, or right. whatever. Uh, you say with like UFCs and all that kind of stuff. So I actually sat down and watched cable 
like when you saw a hotel. commercial yeah probably sometime you had a hotel even then i don't know even then, yeah so i uh, you know i went in seattle when i was in seattle yeah. uh, i did watch a little bit of cable tv there it's like we have cable tv at home for the kids but just so the kids have like they can just tune into whichever you know channel and i think i've maybe watch a minute a week sure Right. Well, I mean, it's all going towards this Netflix and the subscription. Yeah, base. yeah, and just and skipping things forward. Just pick so, whatever you want. So you right? can see why this is this. I think the way they're distributing it, it's going to make it more relevant to people who are younger. Yes. Because of the way they consume stuff just straight onto their phone. Right? Yes, and the timing couldn't be more perfect. Like this is just coming out in 2018. This Cobra Kai TV series, and yes. just a couple of years before the actual Olympics, and all this buzz about karate. Perfect time to bring this out. It just. Don't make it suck. Just, yeah, just, <laughs> just don't make it suck. Yeah, right? that's a big one. Right, like don't do the Jim Carrey version of karate mm. and make it not good. And don't have Will Smith's son play anything in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm not going to say anything about it, um, other than I'm glad they're coming up with something that says that's about karate. Yes, as long as it's enjoyable. Yes, right. As long yeah. as it's fun, even if it's not the greatest karate out there, as long as it's something pretty cool. Yes, right. So. Uh, um, you know, they say, like, if you get a plumber to play a, pl a plumber on TV, it's boring. Yeah. Get an actor to play a plumber, and they're going to bring something out of it. They're going to yes. find some nuance of it. So I don't think they should just – I don't think they should get karate athletes to play athletes. Here's a question for you. Yes. What's your favorite martial arts movie of all time? It's Karate Kid. Karate Kid, really? Yeah, yeah. It's your number one. That, yeah, 1984 Karate Kid is my number one martial arts movie. Yeah. Now I have a lot of martial great. arts movies I like. It's a great choice, but there's a lot to choose from. There's a lot to choose from. But how do you like, you know, master, student, learning more, overcoming? It's very good. It's a classic. Attention. Absolutely. When you watch it, there's not even a karate move for the first 45 minutes. Yeah, and you're still like, capped it into it. You watch the video, this guy cut together of how, like, how Daniel is actually the evil one. Yes, John I have seen one. that. He's, like, he's <laughs> always getting everything. <laughs> Daniel's always the aggressor. And yes. he's like, you know, because he's the one who goes after him on the beach. He's the one who like pours water on him at the thing. Yeah, he's yeah, always yeah. instigating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm really interested in seeing what they're going to do. So everybody out there should uh, should check it out. All right. The other thing I want to tell you is I have survey results from the first Canada Open. Survey says. Survey says. All right. It's just like it was before it started. Uh, there are people like, this is the greatest thing ever. This, I can't believe you put this together. Oh, awesome. All the way to the other side are like, you are equal to ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> right? I've had the like the whole spectrum of it. Sure. Now who who who's the survey from? Like who who filled out the survey? I sent the survey to the athletes, club instructors, and parents. Okay. So anybody who fell into the, the parents. Wow. So there's like like because the emails for everybody. So some athletes, it's the parents' email. So uh, I think we emailed something like fifteen hundred people. Okay. Right? And we have 67 responses. Great. Um, what do they say? What well, did the survey say? I'm going to give you the really cool points about this, all right? So 61% of the people who replied were the parents, right? Which is cool because there's, of course, lots of kids. Yeah. Um, very satisfied, 43%. Nice. Fairly satisfied, 28%. Satisfied, 20%. What have we got there? We're like... We're over 90%. Over 90%. 90 at least satisfied. Are at least satisfied. Then after that, slightly satisfied, a little bit, not satisfied, tiny. Those guys were at the wrong count open. Oh, though. I know. Check this out. Would you recommend this event to a friend? 77.6% said nice. yes. Awesome. Right? And maybe 22. Nobody Zero said knows. no. Yeah. That's so cool. And then in terms of like what they liked, um, you know, whether it's pre-registration, you know, event information, tournament coordination, quality of divisions, officiating, all pretty high scores for everything volunteers. Highest score, you know what it was for? The venue. Ah, okay. I'll show you. That Look doesn't at that. surprise me, actually. The venue got very satisfied. Well, I mean, it's the Richmond Olympic Oval. It's yeah. not as good as it gets. And probably a lot of those people haven't competed in that venue if they haven't already gone through the, the competition yeah. stream. So I think also big, but... the... The triangle from hotel yes. to venue to airport plus so being easy. only an hour from the yes. border. Be interesting to see what what uh, like some of the other countries said, like what the athletes from Mexico said, what the athletes from Japan said. If you can get those, yeah, yeah. Too. So I'm kind of waiting to see, like you know, if there's some feedback and stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I've got lots of people. You know, it's interesting in the feedback. There's some really good things that I didn't know. Some things that people didn't know was going on. Right. Some people were like, "This is the most amazing thing ever." Other ones are. You know this and that 
uh, should it happen or could it happen. So, um, and you know, all the feedback that's in here, we're, I'm going to address it with the organizing committee. Awesome. But overall, I mean, when you look at overall, pretty positive results. Totally. Yeah. I think, that's, I think that's to be expected, not to be expected necessarily, but I think you got the feeling of that yeah, at the exactly. actual tournament. Everybody was pretty happy. Like we talked about it after the tournament, like it was just a happy tournament. Like everybody was happy to be there just to be yeah, competing. Exactly, it was friendly. Exactly. Nobody was, was getting too competitive even like it was, it was almost like a friendship tournament, you yeah, know? I know totally. So yeah, I, I think that's to be expected. Now I didn't plant this or nor asking me to write it, but people even wrote my name like Richard, very open and responsive to suggestions. Wow. Like, great, great. I didn't type that everybody just like uh, full disclosure. <laughs> um, so that was really, really good. All right. Um, we also have, BC team survey results from last year, but I can't share them yet. Okay. It's not completed. Sure. So maybe a week after, two weeks after next, I can talk about how the BC team program went. Great. Um, I can tell you, because it just started, I can tell you so far, uh, pretty good on the things I expected it to be and things I think need improvement also noticed. Sure. So, uh, but can't open, we're coming back. Killing it. And we're not going to change the venue. We've got that same venue for the next two years. So, um, uh, and the venue is very happy. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. Happy. Thank you very much for filling that out. If you've got it in your inbox, please go fill it up. There you go. All right, well, why don't we just get into a little bit of technical tactical? You can keep talking over there. Hey, why don't you help me out on this one? All right. Okay? All right. What do you got? Hit me. Hit me. <laughs> Bang. All right. Make a, a cloud bubble right in front of your face. Okay. Okay, that's where the magic happens. Mm. You could say like, because they're looking at you, like it's all it's beautiful, uh, right? You know. But now make a little cloud bubble over here on the side. That's your comfort zone. Okay. So you got to get out of your comfort zone and go over there to where the magic happens. To where the magic happens. The magic happens. Got to work your ass off. So the mag What you're trying to say here is the magic happens outside your comfort zone. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. And I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and there are no more crises. All right. So My job. I'm documenting, not uh, creating here. I'm looking at how this week has gone with teaching and how I noticed that, and it doesn't matter at the age level, there's a trigger which the person says to themselves, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to push any harder now. Mm -hmm. When you know they could and they go over to their comfort zone and they tune out, right? And you don't know, like maybe I ran a bad class or maybe I didn't, but something is like, no, no, the kid behind beside them or the adult beside them is really digging into it and they're not. Yes. And that, and you go, why aren't they progressing? Because when it gets to that moment where a bead of sweat just popped off their forehead and trickled into their eye, they said, that's it. You know, that was as far as I could go. And, um, so my technical tactical this week is pick something, one thing you need to improve on your karate and go up to your instructor or a senior rank, right? And say to them, I'm stuck on this. Can you give me five minutes of help? Mm. Right? Um, Admitting you need help is the first step. Holy cow. <laughs> it's true, right? Admitting you need help. Absolutely. Right? With anything. Yeah. With anything. So now before you go and talk to them, we talked about videotaping yourself. Yes, yeah. Also, go and practice. Pick 10 minutes extra. I had this happen like literally the last two days. Someone said, I'm really not nailing my kata. So I helped them a little bit. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then at the end of the class, they just walked out and went to talk to a whole bunch of friends on the side for like 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes is great, but you could talk for 10 and go and, practice your kata yes, for some. Yeah. Right? So in terms of like, should I bend my knee more? Should I be more aware of my, of my center? Should I have my shoulders down, my chin in? Should I do this, that, or other drill? That's always good, but you know what? It's volume. Yes. Practice, so, practice, practice. Yeah. And I think what you can even add to that a little bit is not so much, uh, well, I mean, know what you need to improve, but also be very specific about it. Like, I don't yes. think you should just go to your instructor and say, I need help with kata. Like, no, no. Okay. Something really specific. Yes. Be specific. Why about am I it. not nailing this one move? Yes. And if like, you maybe you don't know, maybe you don't know why you're not why not. So then you go up and say, "This is my problem. What's going on specifically?" Like I think you need to be very specific about what it is that you need to improve on, uh, in order to really kind of get out of your comfort zone and, and fix it. I remember the last move of Chinto, which is a spin, then you kick and you you drive your arm out mm -hmm. and you yes. step through the lunge, yes. right? And I remember doing that one. I'm like, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I finally went up to the instructor. I'm like, I just don't get it. And they're like, 
because you're going too slow and the move is only designed to be done fast. <laughs> if you go slow, you got to do like a, a, a 240 turn. You're like hopping, hopping in your foot. You can't do it. They're like, it, it can only be done fast. Yeah. You can only train that quickly. Yes. And then, of course, you can train ways of being more stable in the movement. Mm -hmm. And boom, it just triggered all kinds of things in my lit up things in my brain. Sure. I think when you understand, especially for kata, I think when you understand what the moves actually are, it helps you understand how they're supposed to be performed. Yes. Like I think that, that's a big thing. A lot of times, that's why we do bunkai, right? Um, a lot of the times when you're doing something, like, I can't really apply this. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I know it's a move in the kata, but I don't even really know what it is. So when you actually understand what the move is trying to symbolize or what you're, what you're actually trying to do, that's when you're really going to be able to perform it better and improve. Yeah. Absolutely. There was a, another example from this week of an athlete who has a good reverse punch for Kumite, but couldn't make it faster. Mm. And so we, had, we were doing uh, a drill which only moves the arm, and they kept stepping the leg. And I'm like, okay, so your, your arm speed isn't going up. Why not? Because I'm not stepping my leg fast enough. Mm. No, your arm speed is not <laughs> going up. And then I had to isolate the foot for them, and then they realized they're popping their shoulder and throwing, and it just weren't punching right they weren't punching yeah faster. yeah yeah so um good candidate for throwing things against the wall perfect so that's my thing especially getting back into karate you're not going to get the same results by doing the same thing right same with me i'm not going to get totally. more students if i just do the same thing or help more people and you must study this in school right like how to increase volume or increase load to get more results out of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 really all about adding more, pro progressively adding more to make your body uncomfortable so it can adapt. And that's exactly the same as anything that we're doing. You need, in order to adapt, you have to make yourself uncomfortable. Otherwise, you're just going to stay stagnant. There you go. There you so go. There you go. Get out of your comfort zone. Go to where the magic is happening. That's right. Boom. Boom. All right. Let's get into a little bit of fitness training tip now for the week. And this week, it kind of plays into a little bit of what we just talked about. So what I want to talk about is how do you know how powerful you are? How, how can you measure how powerful you are in your karate? So first of all, we've been over this. So I'm going to test you on this one, Richard. What is the difference between power and strength? We've power. talked about it. Uh, wasn't power something power and strength? Power is with speed. Right? Ah, very good. Power is high speed. That's right. Power is high speed. Strength is slow speed. I'm so like rolling back into my <laughs> nine. You close your eyes. I do. You see your I, eyes I totally, rolling back in the head, and you actually just my wife <laughs> totally <laughs> drives. I'm such a there visual person. Like yeah. I have to recall the image of my. Brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so very good. We know what power is. It's high speed. It's what mostly fuels us in our kumite and in our kata, our karate performance as well. So how do you measure? How do you know how fast you are? Well, what we do on the BC team, we do the long jump for your lower body. We, we break up into lower body and upper body power. So we have the long jump for the for the. Um, lower body as well as the high jump to yep. see how much power you can develop. Now, don't forget that there is a difference for kata and kumite as well. Kata athletes, when they go into their long jump, they pause at the bottom and then explode forward or explode up. So if like they're doing 99% of just regular karate people. Yes. You're doing that. Yes. Yep. Kumite specific athletes would be doing like a counter movement jump where they actually yes. bounce at the bottom and try and jump aside the counter. For, so that's how you can kind of measure your lower body power, upper body power. We do the medicine ball toss, yep. the seated medicine ball toss, sitting on a ball 45 degrees, trying to measure how far you can throw it. And that, and again, isolates just your upper body to see how far you can throw the ball. So that's sort of one of the, you know, two or three tests that you can do to actually measure your karate power, which of course have how fast you're doing. And then it kind of tells you where you're at. You can train your power and then retest it in the way it's part of, you know, the physiological requirements of karate. And I have data to support that. Awesome. <laughs> What's a really good one that anybody can do in the dojo? The long jump. I, I think the long, long jump, jump one is is the most applicable to karate too because we are more we're moving more linearly. We're not up and down so much. We're more 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 on the four horizontally. So the long jump is definitely probably so like the step, best one. Step step jump? Nope. That would just be so a standing long jump. So you're standing at the beginning of a measuring tape, double two feet legs. together, double legs down jump forward as far as you can. Yep. Wherever you land, it's usually taking the back of the heels. So wherever yep. your back heel is, figure out how many centimeters that is, 100, 200, whatever centimeters. Uh, and that's that's kind of the best one for karate, the best and the easiest for karate performance as well. That's awesome. We've been doing that a lot. Yeah, and yep. we've been doing it. Uh, that's what we've been doing at our, I guess we're doing it quarterly, our quarterly fitness yep. kind of tests that we've been doing here at Kenza. You know what I did with the kids last week? I made them do 15 15s. Nice. Just like we talked about. Exactly. It was yeah. awesome. You know, the parents were so impressed. Like, you know, some of the kids you thought would be really good, they they slowed down over mm, time and yeah, other yeah. kids 
actually picked up pace and some kids have never run that long in their life. <laughs> I believe it. They've never done that amount of distance running and changing direction. It's different than just going straight ahead and yes, just continuously yes. moving straight, yep. but back and forth, back and forth. Right. Use those yeah. plyometric movements. No, it was awesome. Yeah. Well, great on there it is. how to measure power. Yes. So I guess if you wanted to measure power in the dojo, you just set up a, a measuring tape, mark out some lines, and just go, okay, let's see who's got the longest jump. I mean, you don't even really have to. Uh, yes, you should me do a measuring tape, but you could do, hey, it's about a meter and a half. It's exactly. about a meter. You don't even really exactly. necessarily need it. Uh, and, and, and I should also say, the good thing about this too is you can also do in the gym is the medicine ball toss from your knees. We've done that one before. Yes. If you don't have a workout bench, you can go to 45 degrees. You can just go on your knees at the beginning of the line and see how far you can throw a standardized That's medicine ball. You can throw and fall forward, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can fall forward. You don't use your feet, though, so your toes should be tucked underneath. You don't want to be up on flat. your toes. Flat, yes. You yeah. should do your toes like in Seiza yeah, type thing. Position. Not quite Seiza. You're up a little bit more. But, yeah. 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 Flat is called dead, and toes gripping is called alive. What yeah, so dead doing? position. Yeah. That's awesome. There man. you go. That's how you can measure your That's karate awesome. power in the dojo or on your own. All right. That just about wraps up this episode. Episode right. 50 of the Cody 360 Just keep flying through these. Before we finish it off, don't forget about a couple upcoming tournaments. We know uh, September 8th to 10th, like I said, is the German Open in Leipzig, Germany. We'll talk about that next week on the podcast. We'll go over the results, go over everything you need to know. Uh, also coming up here in September 16th to 17th is the Junior and Cadet and U21 Mediterranean Championships in Morocco. Hey, Craig is at is in Germany, so we might be able to snag him. Ah, let's try and do that for sure. coaching, right? Yes, so, that's right. We should absolutely get try and get him. reflections from him. Uh, finally, at the end of September, September 23rd, 24th, is uh, Series A in Istanbul as well. So that kind of wraps up in September. And then, of course, in October, we start getting into the World Cadet Junior and U21 Championships in Spain at the end of October. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, we've got one athlete training for it right now. We do. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, the other thing I want to throw out there. Throw it. Maybe uh, it. I'm just throwing it out there. Throw it. We are going to start interviewing people. Yes, absolutely. So we're figuring out our equipment. We're figuring out our time. If you are interested, and we've got a few people like Jay in Australia. Yeah. Who was at the last World Championships. Yeah. We're going to talk to him. So we're going to figure out a way that we can chat with you over FaceTime or over Skype. Or we can do Record it. really short conversations and find out what's really ticking in your head and in your world. Yeah. And we want to bring you on the show. Absolutely. I think we should do it. Absolutely. There you go. So that's things coming down for the Karate 360 podcast. We're almost a year in and we got lots to go. We're just warming up. Just warming up. We're just warming up. Going to keep getting better, keep getting greater. Anything you guys want uh, to to see, to know, let us know. Write to us, karate360podcast.com, karate360 on all the social media stuff. We're going to get an Instagram account too, whether you know it or not. We're going to get an Instagram account. I believe you. And then we're going to go Instagram live as well. We're going to be all over the place. Fantastic. There we go. Anyways, we got through the whole episode without even saying our names, who we are. Hey, I have been known to be called Richard. You have Richard. <laughs> Richard Mazda. Richard Mazda. Yeah. Oh, I have to say it probably Richard Mazda. Richard Mazda. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been known to be. Kayla Mangloss. There you go. There we go. All right, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in. We do appreciate it. Every Thursday night, we're going to be doing these live. Every Monday morning, they come up for download. Sounds good. There we go. Thanks, guys. That's this episode of the Karate 360 Podcast. San Rokumaru. Bye.